Hi and welcome to the tutorial for drawings using SolidWorks 2010. Okay, to start off with we'll be using an existing assembly that we created which is the tic-tac-toe which should have been created in the previous tutorials. So first off I want you to open up, we're going to open up our tic-tac-toe assembly folder and we'll go open like so and this is there's a reason for this now um, now we can actually go and start creating our drawing so we go up to file new click on new and we'll go down and click on drawings and click OK OK so what we can do here is we can actually start to once we get into SolidWorks create our custom what are called templates which has all our names, drawings, scaling, um, sheet size as well but to start off we're just going to use the standard BSI A3 or whatever settings you're using, it might be American standards or European. So BSI is just British, that's all it stands for, British uh, standards. Okay, so we're going to click on A3 BSI and and then we can click OK and we're ready to go. Right here we've got our general drawing layout. So down here in the corner we've got where we can add our name, signature, date, materials, weights, it has the scale in there, title. The revision, which is the number of drawings, so like when we make a revision, we change the re revision number. Okay, so now we're ready to just start adding in. Our first off, what we'll do is adding our drawings of the assembly. Um, the reason behind we'll add in the assembly drawings, and what we'll do is number each part, so then we'll number each part, so therefore the manufacturer, or whoever's getting the drawings, knows which exactly which part is which, and how they all come together in the assembly. So to do this, we'll add in different uh, drawings, uh, angle drawings of the tic-tac-toe and the sides uh, drawings and then we'll add some uh, ballooning, balloon the drawings and add a table of bill of materials which will tell us, indicate what number is which part, okay? So we will select tic-tac-toe and we'll select next up here. Then, right, over here we've got all our different views that we can have, such as if we hover over them, top, left, bottom, right, or side, and then I'll, uh, or even isometric, and then at the bottom here we can, we can scale it up as well. We can use sheet scale, and we can use custom scale. So, uh, I want to click on use sheet scale, because we're going to edit that sheet scale later. And then up here we're going to bring our first view in, which is the top view. So if we click on top, and we can bring that across. And now we'll go over into our window, and we'll see a square appears. So if you just click anywhere, because we we'll move this later, and that will bring in a view for us of our top. Now if we drag out from that top view, not clicking the green tick just yet, we can see that we can also pull out automatically different views of the object. So the only other view I'm going to want is a side view. Okay, so we click somewhere to the side like so. Now we're ready. Using parent scale, okay, projected, we're all okay there. So I can green tick that. Now I can right tick and I can go to basically what we need to do now is change the properties. As you can see here, um, our, our, our drawings aren't taking up the whole uh, amount of space that we could be. So we need to basically change the sheet scale so that they are. So I right click here, go into properties. Um, first off at the top here, we we'll give this sheet name assembly. Okay, and this will change if we, once we click OK, I'll show you where it changes. And we'll put a scale as well of two to one. And we can OK, tick that. Right. So there we go. Now they're a nice, decent size. I mean, this is really useful. Um, if you imagine you've got parts or assemblies that are really, really detailed, it's always good to get them as big as possible so that it's nice and clear and easy to see. Okay. So now we've done that. Uh, basically, what I need to create now is a cutaway section here. So therefore, we can see exactly what's happening with the, um, the bolts as they go all the way through and there's a hole at the bottom here that we can't actually see. So we need to show whoever's reading these drawings that feature. In order to do so we're going to do a broken out uh, view. So if I go up first we want to create a spline. Okay, So we'll create a spline around that area. Just copy similarly what I'm doing here. So, and like so. 
So something similar to that. Now we've got that. I can green tick that. Now I can go across to view layout. And if we go up to across to broken out section, making sure that the broken out, the, the spline that we just created is selected. Let me click on broken out section. Okay. First off, in the broken out section, I want you to click on auto hatching and exclude fastness. And um, we'll green tick that. Okay. Right. Now the depth. This is important. Okay. So we want it to go exactly halfway down to show the feature. So I'll click on one of them circles here. We'll go to preview and this will show us. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. And we can exclude fasteners as well. And now we can green tick that. Okay. So now we've got our feature there that we can see that this hole goes, follows all the way down through. So once we've done that, now we basically need to uh, add in um, a feature that will show that all these lines are lined up and all these lines here are lined up. And this is called, if we go across to annotation, this is called the uh, center mark feature. So if we go center mark, click on that, and then I'll click on all these for the standard one. Okay, sorry, I've got that wrong. So center line, make sure this single center mark is collected. So click on all the individual ones. Okay, now that's been done. We can green tick that. Now we're ready to put the last lot in. So like so we'll just click all of them this basically is showing the manufacturer that all these line up so therefore when you go to put a dimension in for these holes you only have to put one in because then we'll know that these are all equal and the same like okay so we can green tick that now now we can go across and add our center lines into the drawing so click on center line if I click on this edge here and this edge here, that'll add a center line down the middle, and this edge here, this edge here, another center line down the middle, and on the outskirts of here, and we'll green tick that. Now, we just don't want this one here, that's not needed for now. Right. Okay, so now that's all done. Now we're ready to add our bill of materials, which is a table indicating basically to us um, which part is which and it will number them up automatically and then we can add what are called auto balloons which are numbers to, to indicate what part is which so first off we'll, we'll put in our table so we'll go insert and we'll go tables and bill of materials click on there then we've got to select the part that we want to use here so I've selected the, um, one of the pictures now go down to display configurations of the same part as a separate item. So we want to make sure this is uh, selected. So we can green tick that now. And we can just add in here our table appears and it asks us to locate it. So I'm just going to put mine here for now. Okay, that's all good. As you can see at the moment our part names aren't correct. But we'll change them afterwards once we've auto bloomed basically everything. So. Actually, I'll do that before because then we can take away. I'll do the counters first. So, I want to break the link. Okay, so I want that to be X counter and break link. That to be O counter. Okay, I want that number one to be top. Break link with that. I want that to be bottom. Okay, and I want that to be. I could break the link on that. We'll put a capital there. It's important that we break the link of that top one. Okay, so now we're ready to add. So we've got X, we've got O, we've got bottom, we've got top. So now we're ready to add in our uh, auto bloom feature. So if I click on auto bloom, right, and we'll go, we'll just go top for now. We'll click on top and we'll click on here. Okay, so this will automatically auto bloom everything for us which is nice okay and we can green tick that now so one and two are the wrong way around so all I've got to do is I drag on to here drag on actually up here oops one and two sorry now drag my five away 
across to there and I'll bring my two up like so right that's nice okay two I now I've got to rename these because they're wrong so that can be top okay and that can be bottom right now that's correct now um, what I've got to do here basically is I want to drag across because we can't at the moment see which is three and four so we don't know I mean it's pretty easy to see that they are X and O but you know for the sake of it we need to actually clearly indicate it so first off four is O counter so if I drag that across to here like so And then R3 is the X counter. So there we go. We'll click on there. And then we'll do that like so. Okay. So now that's all numbered up. We've got our parts. Um, we could add a description if we wanted. That's simply done by double clicking in there, but we don't want to. Um, okay. Now we've got to. There's one final thing that we haven't done is we've got to add our name and some details to the sheet so if we right click down here we can edit sheet format now we can actually enter into here our names for instance so I'm going to double click on here and I'm going to add John uh, and we'll click out to that and then a date maybe so 17th 08 2010 and then we can maybe Revision, we'll add a revision number there, so not revision one, it's the first, and we'll maybe add a title as well, so tick. Um, we'll add assembly actually. Okay, that looks good to me. Now we can, now if I double click out that anywhere in the sheet, it will. Let me see. If I click, sorry, the rebuild button, that will get us out. Now we can see that's all changed. And that completes the first part of our tutorial in drawings.